I'm Noreen and welcome to my kitchen and another installment of Channel Check. Today we are going to tackle a very serious and important subject, holiday food safety. With Christmas just around the corner and parties, get-togethers, family gatherings, open houses, church potlucks, all those things coming into the mix, I think it's really important to just take a brief moment and talk about food safety, especially at holiday time. So... We're going to go by the guidelines that I've always known, having worked in the restaurant industry for a while, having done catering with my mother and on my own a couple of times. Food safety is absolutely of the utmost importance. Number one, get yourself an instant read thermometer. They're super cheap. You can get them just about anywhere. And for under $10, like at Sam's Club, you can get a set of two for like 12 bucks. At just about any big box store, you can get a good instant read thermometer. You have your choice. You can get a digital, you can get an analog. My preference is the old-fashioned analog kind. You can keep them in your, in your coat pocket and then you just zip them out. They come in a little sheath and you're easily able to take the temperature of your hot things really easily. So, number one, we're going to go over the four really important things, right? Clean, separate, cook, and chill. Clean is a given. Wash your hands. Wash all the stuff you're going to cook with. Wash your surfaces and make sure they're clean, sanitized, and disinfected. Number two, separate. Never, ever put raw and cooked things together. You don't want your raw meat to touch your cooked meat. You don't want your chicken juice to get on your smoked ham. You don't want your ground beef to touch your fresh vegetables. Make sure that happens. Cook. You want to keep hot things hot and cold things cold. So... When you're talking about cooking, you want to make sure that things are cooked to their proper internal temperature. And as a little guideline, poultry and casseroles need to be cooked to an internal temperature of 165 degrees. Ground beef needs to be cooked to an internal temperature of 160. So that would be like your meatballs, meatloaf, anything that you've put ground beef in, like pasta sauce or something like that, stroganoff. I don't know what you all cook for the holidays, but like stuffed cabbage, I would have to make sure that that was cooked to 160 degrees. Beef, pork, veal, and lamb need to be cooked, if you're roasting them, to an internal temperature of 145 degrees, and that is after you take it out of the oven. You don't take the temperature until it's rested for three minutes. Now, you don't want to only rest it for three minutes. That's another thing. When you're cooking, you want to let those meats rest for 30 minutes before you start to slice them. So for food safety purposes, you want to take the temperature after it's been out of the oven for three minutes because otherwise you could get an inaccurate reading because it's still super hot from being in the oven and you want to make sure that you get an accurate reading so that if you have to put it back in the oven that you can do that. So like I said, hot things hot, cold things cold. Employ things like crock pots, warming trays, chafing dishes, on your buffet to make sure everything stays warm like it needs to be. And before you put them in those things, make sure that you heat them on the stove or in the oven to the proper temperature like we just discussed. And make sure that you employ that instant read thermometer. And if you have more than one person working on the buffet, everybody doing that should actually have their own thermometer so that they can take the temperature on their own. Nothing worse than saying, oh, I need the thermometer. Do you have the thermometer? Where did it go? I can't find it. Make sure you have more than one. It's I have a drawer full of, of instant read thermometers, so it's not that hard to acquire them. Cold things, you want to make sure that you're keeping them on ice. If you have a vegetable tray or deviled eggs or potato salad, macaroni salad, anything that needs to be kept cold, you need to put in a tray of ice. So you know how much I love my foil pans. Those half steam table pans that I use for all sorts of things. Put your cold stuff in, in those and then take another one and fill it with ice and just slip one, slip whatever your food is in on top. Then anyway, you're going to have a tray of ice in the bottom. It's going to keep things cold and you're not going to have to worry about it. Um, for transporting, you want to make sure you keep your hot things hot and cold things cold also. So if you have an insulated bag for the casseroles that you're going to be carrying or if you have, you know, you need to put the cold things in a cooler so they remain cold. Of course, it's winter right now, so it's not really that difficult to keep things cold. But if you have something hot that you want to transport, it's you know, make it the day before, stick it in the fridge, carry it to your event, and if possible, if you're taking for family or something like that, 
you can heat it in their oven and then make sure it's the right temperature for serving. I just have some notes I'm referring to down here. So we want to make sure we clean, we cook, we separate, and we chill. Chill means you want to make sure that you are putting any leftovers in the refrigerator no later than after two hours because after that time you could really be running into some problems and I have a really great guideline from the USDA that I'm going to share with you um, you want to keep food out of the danger zone and they write bacteria can grow rapidly at room temperature and after food is cooked keep it hot keep food hot food hot and cold food cold and refrigerate or freeze any perishable food within two hours the temperature in your refrigerator should be set at or below 40 degrees and the freezer should be set at zero so you want to make sure of that have you taken the time to look at where your refrigerator and your freezer are set because that could come in really important uh, as well if you're using eggs for eggnog if you're making your own homemade eggnog or if you're making something that uh, like hollandaise sauce technically that is a raw egg you want to make sure they're using pasteurized eggs so that you can avoid salmonella poisoning um, other harmful germs besides salmonella can live in both the inside and outside of normal looking eggs and many holiday favorites containing raw eggs including eggnog tiramisu hollandaise and caesar salad dressing um, always use those the pasteurized egg product and if you go to the section in your grocery store where they sell the, the fresh eggs you're going to also see pasteurized egg whites, pasteurized eggs, and egg substitute. Those things are all acceptable in cooking uh, at, for a pasteurized egg product. That just means they've been heated up a little bit, but not cooked. Um, and then they've been processed and put in a carton so that they're easy to use. Here's a big one I know no one's going to want to hear. Do not eat raw cookie dough. Our grandmothers all told us, don't eat the raw cookie dough. With my grandmother, my German born and bred grandmother, it was, don't eat the cookie dough, you will get worms, right? You'll get worms. That's always pleasant to hear, but did it stop you as a kid from eating it? Does it stop you as an adult from eating it? Probably not. I will say, if you raise your own chickens and get your eggs from your fresh, from your fresh eggs from your own chickens and they're super fresh it's probably not a big deal and we also need to employ logic here but the rule is you shouldn't eat raw cookie dough because of the chance of salmonella from the fresh eggs as well as flour there is a risk of flour have you ever looked at the bag your flour comes in every single bag I've checked since the they pulled the gold metal unbleached flour off the shelf earlier this year due to salmonella poisoning it says it right on the bag. Do not consume raw flour. Who knew? I didn't know that. But now we know that. And you want to just you want to employ best safety practices here. And also, let's use our brain a little. Um, and then we want to make sure we keep our foods separated. And we want to make sure that we cook our foods thoroughly. So that's just a little happy, healthy reminder that food safety should come into play at some point during the holidays. Keep hot foods hot, cold foods cold, wash your hands, wash your counters, wash your utensils, wash your pans. Easy stuff. These things seem logical and easy, but sometimes we forget because we get in a hurry and we're trying to get 12 things done at one time. Don't lie to me. I know you've done it. I've done it. So let's just take a moment Let's think food safety. Grab yourself an instant read thermometer. Take the temperature of everything you possibly can so you know that everything is the way it's supposed to be. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. I hope that you've all had a great week. We're in the run-up to Christmas. I have some exciting things coming. Yesterday, I posted a video on how to make a holiday vegetable tray. And also in there, if you've watched that video, we are holding a giveaway. So you might want to go check that out because we will be drawing for that sometime next week. And who knows, you might win. Um, so go check that video out. I'm going to leave a link to it at the end of this video. You probably see it on the screen here in just a moment. Um, more recipes coming your way every single day until Christmas. So I hope you're enjoying all of this as much as I am. I hope that you have a great week. We'll be back next week to talk about something else. And until next time, I'll see ya.